Okay, and I'm back with the big version of the freewheel. This is the base for the trike 1.0, and I'm going to uh, make a version now in front of your very eyes. It's going to be amazing with the, all the updated parts. So the first thing to do is to remove the outdated parts. Basically. Um, the first thing that I did is design the new aluminium pods, which I've shown before. Let me show you again, because there's nothing prettier than aluminium. And so this is a pod that I've designed originally for my new pen car, but it is the pen car rear end is similar to the trike rear end. And this is usable for the F103 as well from Tamiya and the F103 GT. Only difference will be uh, the stiffening plate that you put on top because uh, the 103 is a bit narrower than my, my trike and my pan car. Can we focus one day, please? Yeah. Right, so what do I have different compared to the Trike 1.0 is going to be pretty much uh, moving away from everything 3D printed except for the C-Hub in the front. And that is, that is a part that is I'm so happy about that I don't see any reason to change it. To something like aluminium or carbon i will do some uh, higher quality there is actually already on shapeways all the parts you can get in sls they're just a lot more expensive than the printed part in abs and the front c hub at the moment i have never had this part break any more than i have plastic c hub uh, get broken before so it is it is really well uh, engineered to break if it needs to break but so far what broke the most on every one of the trike chassis has been the front carbon bumper here so this it is indeed ABS it is indeed 3d printed with uh, regular you know layering it's not powder printed but it works extremely well I just I, I guess that, that people are not very keen on having a, a car that has too many 3d printed parts so I am now moving away from it and it's gonna be a lot of metal and carbon because everybody loves metal and most people love carbon now I would like to to do a more uh, FR4 parts for the cars just because it is so inexpensive to cut FR4 and you can get a few hundred parts for the cost of l less than a dozen carbon parts so I know as well that it is not as durable as carbon for chassis plates but for a lot of other, par other parts like the battery mounts, uh, bumpers uh, height adapters and stuff like that I'm going to use FR4 which is I'm waiting on uh, you see those I have different height adjusters here that are in ABS 3D printed at the moment I'm gonna have those in FR4 uh, so FR4 is basically uh, carbon fiber plates carbon fiber and resin so it's the same as the graphite here except that instead of having a uh, carbon fiber is got fiberglass in it so that's that's what you had on the old uh, the old time RC cars so it is more uh, flexible as well it is more brittle of course that's why it's it's better to use carbon fiber for the chassis plates but I'm going to be using it for my mini uh, my mini series of little vintage F1 cars the 128 series and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do some parts optional with this for this car and for the pen car as well later on. Still remain to be 
scene. So you see I'm removing all the 3D printed part all the way to the front. Oh, this got some Loctite. And so you'll see the extent to which there will be 3D print on the car is going to be extremely little now. So let's remove everything. So I personally really really like 3D printing because I can I can only I don't need to order parts, I can make parts whenever somebody has a breakage or something. But what are you gonna do? You can't fight the world. Okay, so we now have see the new aluminium part. Let me do a quick mock-up. Then I'm gonna go fill up my belly with delicious food and I will come back to assemble this beast. Let me see if I can okay that's a little bit better. So gonna have the pod like so we are going to have a few aluminium poles chick juke and over there and so this is what is going to hold the battery straps so now of course that a the battery straps are not going to come in all the different versions I had before. It's only going to come for the shorty pack. So that's going to be on top here for the shorty. And with the velcro strap around. Uh, we'll have lower lower poles. Those are a little bit tall. I think I have half the height. And then we have the brace on top of the pod. That is going to be here, like so. Alright. And then the steering assembly. Where is my where did my steering go? It's over here. So this part here that I like is going to be replaced by the carbon fiber. And then there's gonna still be a small cylinder sticking out there over here and then the servo is going to be a lot simpler system which I like this indeed is a good change which is going to be simply two poles and a pressure plate on top of it to push it down and so this way we're gonna be able to use the 112 as well as the 110 uh, size servo and my camera just stopped so yeah, so that's going to be the change for the front, which is going to be good. 110 or 112 servo. And over there, I think the best is going to be using the 12, um, 112 1S system. So everything stays really low to the ground. So here you go for the little trike update. I'll come back when I'm assembling stuff, but right now I'm starving. So see you soon. I'm back with a little bit of assembly ring go away ring of light all right so I know I'm not putting Loctite I'm just doing a pre little test of the assembly I want to see what it looks like I'm going to be assembling it as well with a 112 servo and I want to see if my system of uh, squeezing the servo down is going to be enough to maintain it. Um, I remember the first uh, prototype that I did of this car. I double sided tape a 110 servo to the chassis and that was really 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 sufficient. However I'm not gonna ask people of course to do the same with their servo but technically they could. Uh, let's see what poles do I have that are a little shorter than that. This is I think this is the one for the 110 servo but well this this is slightly smaller. Uh, it's still too tall for the 112 so we're gonna go with this one. 
we're gonna go with this one for oh, you're the wrong screw you're the right screw all right i'm gonna need a new one so basically it's a super simple concept for holding the servo which is the way i like to design stuff i don't like complications and i don't like to have too many moving parts i prefer if the choice of tires and the trigger trigger finger are what makes the car behave instead of a million things you can change and now as long as the servo is held in place it's fine and the thing that I think is an advantage as well doing it this way is that you'll be able to put the servo at any angle you like on the car so it's not going to be restrictive and that's going to work extremely well I should have I should tape it first but I'm just gonna mock up just gonna mock up the things how it is all and I need to find some screws BAM magic all right this is long enough perfect so I'm not gonna place it and I'm not gonna force it down too much at the moment so I'm just gonna put that on top just enough to hold the servo in place here you go oh that's that is beauty beautiful right so here you go right now the servo can still move to any position that you would like I think a bit of double-sided tape at the bottom of it will do of course I can still have the options to have the regular servo mounts when you screw from the front and the back but I really believe this is going to be the best way to give the most amount of options and and let users really fit everything the way they want which is what I what I really want the most for this car I want something as flexible as possible the exact opposite of my body all right, so now we're putting the little poles at the back for the battery strap. So now it's gonna be using only shorty battery. Now I'm gonna rebuild mine, the one you're actually looking at. I'm going to be rebuilding it and I'm gonna use a 112 system only, which I do not currently have. I don't have any 112 that I'm running with a 1S system so this is something I'm gonna have to get but uh, I believe that this car with a low center of gravity is going to be killer because it's honestly a pretty crazy car to drive right now it's really really lively and extremely quick I have no idea if the video do any uh, any service or not to the way the car actually drives but uh, yeah, you gotta drive it to and to, to get it. It's a it's a crazy little thing. Alright, uh, you can maybe you can going on my phone is switching off on me. What is happening? Uh, if you can hear in the background, I'm actually printing one of the few parts of the car that is going to be 3D printed, which is uh, a little support to put underneath the carbon steering plate in the front I do not know why I speak so slowly when I'm on camera it's a mystery to me maybe I should start stucking like a, like a TV host starting like that and ending up like that all right so here we are now those those really grub screws are going to need to have some little Loctite put on them because this is where you're going to mount the body posts and so they need to be placed first so they stop moving or maybe if I use the longer countersunk screw count, 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 counter sunk screws here so they will they will go and, and 
stop over there. Maybe that's actually a better idea than what I'm doing. Uh, this part here has to go. Problem is double-sided tape is the strongest thing known to man, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to remove it. This is where uh, I mount the electronics. So there is a lot more space as well on the chassis now compared to before with the big servo mount. All right, and I'm forgetting. I don't actually going to need more screws. I'm forgetting this part of the hair, of the, of the hair, over here, here. All right. Oh, part is printed. All right, I'm going to go pick it up, and I'm going to go find more screws in order to finish mounting the pot. I'll be back. Ta-da! Through the magic of not editing, I'm back. Okay, so the pod, which is uh, the pod brace, I mean, which is the same pod brace that is used in the prototype 112 that I called FP for Formula Pancar. A wonderful name. So, the reason why you have those holes here is because the Formula Pan has those options over there to uh, mount dampening tubes, and I do not advise to run any damper on that car unless you're running a pretty heavy body like the Reliant or something like that or the the Tuk Tuk from uh, the Flamingo body from X Rider or the, the Tuk Tuk 3D printed Tuk Tuk body that I have then then yeah you can have in that case but other than that I don't think it's necessary because it's it's pretty springy at the back and I don't know I just find the, the chassis to be more predictable and and more uh, just all around better without however the option is here and so there will be uh, there will be some additional parts that can be added to run either dual dampers left and right or central damper this can be flipped as well and you can have the damper between the rear and the pods and the back of the battery mount as well so that's going to be there now this little guy is oh i should send it first hold on let's do the full the full monty here mm, you see this is super rough out of the printer i should print without the board but i'm just i'm in a, I'm in a hurry i want to see what things 